Okay guys, so in this presentation, I'm going to basically go over what the science says about uh, repetition tempo on hypertrophy. So a quick Google search will bring you up a lot of common claims that you hear that uh, controlling the tempo will increase time under tension, that the eccentric contraction is more important for hypertrophy, and that even some hormonal responses are different from um, controlled tempos. So the first thing we go over, go over basically is that are uh, eccentric contractions important for muscle hypertrophy? So this was a study looking at um, the influence of concentric versus eccentric only contractions on muscle cross-sectional area and strength. Um, but we're for this presentation only going to be concerned about the muscle cross-sectional area. And there was a very in this study, there was very minimal um, actual changes in cross-sectional area, and even the changes that were present were not uh, not significantly different. So there was no real difference in cross-sectional area, and the small changes further limit its credibility. So we can almost ignore this study. The next study that uh, I found compared. Um, basically eight weeks of strength training with eccentric only contractions or eight weeks of strength training with concentric only contractions and they me basically measured muscle thickness of the um of the arms before and after uh, after the eight weeks of training so what's important to note is that in these studies often they use um, expensive equipment called isokinetic dynamometry where they have these expensive machines and they basically allow um, specific speeds um, that you can maximally contract at and the contraction is the same speed the entire time. So what they did was they actually compared, this is a control group, so they didn't really do anything. They had one group that lifted um, slowly. So they did the, um, I'm not sure exactly the speed, but they, uh, they basically either did concentric or eccentric uh, contractions that were slow and then another group did it that were fast. And so then they measured the muscle thickness before and after. So what we see is that the eccentric contractions at fast speeds had the biggest change in muscle thickness followed by the eccentric contractions at slow speeds followed by the concentric contractions at um, slow speeds, followed by the concentric contractions at fast speeds. And basically what we see is that there's greater hypertrophy from the eccentric only muscle actions. And this is, while it seems like the eccentric contraction is creating all the muscle hypertrophy, this actually may have something to do with the force velocity relationship, whereby these eccentric contractions, because they are all done at max effort using isometric dynamometry, that you the participants are able to produce much more force during a fast eccentric contraction than a fast concentric contraction. So if we actually have a look at the ranking order one, two, three, and four, that's actually the same order of um, potential force production. So at maximal, at maximal effort, the force produced at fast eccentric contractions is going to be the most than the force produced at fast um, at slow eccentric contractions will be second highest, followed by slow concentric contractions, followed by fast concentric contractions. And we can see that here in this force velocity relationship where the, this is velocity on this axis, this is force on this axis. And this is eccentric and concentric. So this is basically zero velocity, this line here. And the fast eccentric action, so higher velocity at um, in the eccentric contractions are going to have the highest force. And the um, basically the lowest force is going to be these fast concentric contractions. So that may have something to do with what we just saw in the previous study. In this systematic review and meta-analysis, um, they also found eccentric only training to increase muscle strength and mass 
more than concentric only contractions. And basically what they what they suggested here, this is a very recent paper, is that um, eccentric the reason that eccentric training may be more beneficial is because of the higher loads developed during the eccentric contraction. So that further you know suggests that this may have something to do with it. And remember, in reality, we don't do eccentric only contractions for most of the uh, exercises we do for hypertrophy, nor do we do concentric only contractions. Usually it's a combination of both concentric and eccentric muscle actions. Now moving on to uh, lifting tempo and hormonal responses, we have this, this uh, study by Headley uh, et al. 2011 where they basically got people to do, they got two groups to do bench presses at either, I think it was 75% of the one rep max using either, and basically till muscular fa failure, doing either a 2-0-2 tempo, so that's two seconds eccentric, zero second pause, and then two second concentric. So basically they lowered it for the bench press for two seconds and then uh, did the lifting part for two seconds as well. And then the slow group did the same thing. They lowered it for two seconds. There was no pause. And then they basically uh, did the lifting phase for four seconds as opposed to two seconds. And there was basically, out of all the hormonal uh, blood markers they, um, they measured, the only difference was in IGF-1 levels. So um, the faster tempo group actually had higher IGF-1 levels immediately after the exercise. And this is probably due to the, um, the greater work and the greater total loads lifted in that faster group. Because if you think about it, when you um, lift intentionally slow, you have a slower tempo, that requires more work from the muscles, and therefore you're gonna fatigue quicker. So using a faster tempo, you'll be able to get more repetitions out, and you're going to be able to use more load. Um, and so they said they sort of said here, heavier loads can be lifted and more total work can be performed using a uh, 202 tempo as opposed to a slower tempo. So moving on, we get to the good stuff, repetition duration and hypertrophy. So this is a, basically a meta-analysis by Schoenfeld, Ogborn and Krieger 2015. And they basically look directly at the length of the repetition duration and um, the effect on hypertrophy. So they got all the studies and pretty much every study except for one showed no difference in hypertrophy using fast versus slow repetitions. Um, all these the studies obviously use different uh, their versions of slow and fast were different uh, speeds of repetition. So the duration of reps were different, um, but basically in that 0 0.5 to 8 second range, there was no real difference that in hypertrophy. There was one study that used extremely long, um, extremely long duration repetitions. So their each rep was actually greater than 10 seconds. So the time that they did the eccentric portion and the concentric portion was greater than 10 seconds. So think about it. That's uh, at least five seconds down, five seconds up. And that had, um, that showed um, lower uh, lower hypertrophy effects than, um, than faster repetitions. But that's one study, so it's quite a weak evidence. But basically, this, this uh, meta-analysis suggesting that um, if you're lifting within this sort of normal, pretty normal range, which, um, this is very fast actually, and this is quite slow. If you're lifting in that range, which most people generally would be, then the effect of hypertrophy is not really any different. And so we come to sort of these practical applications. So unless you have regular access to what we're talking about, the isokinetic dynamometers, um, most of the exercises you're gonna do are gonna have an eccentric and a concentric muscle action. So if you think about a squat, you lower, you lower down and then you lift back up. That's the concentric and eccentric portions um, of the exercise. Um, and therefore, when you, when you do specific tempos, 
um, intentionally slowing it down, for example, can actually, you know, it'll reduce the amount of load you're able to be to use, and it's going to reduce the amount of repetitions you're going to be able to, to perform. So tempo may actually affect hypertrophy, but it, it affects it probably more indirectly um, because it influences um, how much total work and how much total load a muscle group can um, can move. So really, instead of using intentionally slow eccentrics, um, you might as well just use more weight or do more reps. That's a, probably going to be a better way of getting more work and more volume in and using heavier loads, which is probably going to have much greater effect on hypertrophy than um, simply slowing down the tempo. Um, but some actual maybe benefits of, of intentionally slow uh, tempo can be maybe if heavy loads are unavailable. So, for example, if you're at one of those hotel gyms where um, maybe the the weights don't go as heavy as your as you can potentially lift, then you might use um, specific tempo tempo work to actually get a hyper, hypertrophic response because those heavy loads are simply unavailable. Um, and then the last point is that. It's probably a good idea because the eccentric portion actually um, it's still it's still work from the muscle. Um, we shouldn't really be letting gravity do all the work, so it's still a good idea to control it somewhat. It doesn't have to be exaggerated controlling, but um, controlling it somewhat means that you're still doing eccentric work. So as long as we're still doing the eccentric and concentric work then we're probably going to be getting more um, work, total work to that muscle and therefore inducing more volume and probably getting a greater hypertrophic response from that. Uh, and that's all I've got. Uh, don't forget to uh, check Movement Out Performance out on Facebook and Instagram. If you like the scientific stuff, I post a lot of um, uh, research pictures and that sort of thing and then subscribe if you want to see more on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of it.